Thank you very much, Laura, for inviting me. Uh, thanks to uh, Professor Jones, who seems to have just left. But uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing to see the conference grow from year to year. I see there's like an extra row of tables here this year, right? Yeah, I think next year we're going to have to knock down some of these walls. Right, yeah, exactly, just for us. So anyway, uh, so it's a great pleasure to be here uh, today to give you a quick uh, overview of uh, what we've been up to at EarthSense, uh, and then where we're headed uh, next. That's me, all right. Uh, so I think uh, to start off, I think one of the main things we should keep in mind is the agriculture industry as it stands today has been phenomenally successful, right? Uh, since 1960, uh, uh, with the beginning of that uh, green revolution, uh, Grain yields, agricultural yields, have more than kept pace uh, with population growth. In fact, by some estimates, about half of the world's population wouldn't be alive today uh, regard if we didn't have the technologies that we have today. Uh, so I think we should take a moment to celebrate that. But, you know, and I'm sure most of you saw this coming, uh, there are also significant problems uh, with respect to how we do agriculture today that threaten uh, really the basis of how we do agriculture. Uh, to begin with, agriculture is getting riskier, and uh, Sam as well as Keith uh, both mentioned this. Uh, costs have continually risen uh, right back from sort of when the USDA started keeping records. Uh, and then last year, bankruptcies in US farms jumped 20%. So farmers are not having a great time. Uh, and then, of course, agriculture itself is under uh, critical threats. Uh, soil erosion continues to be a major problem, uh, even in the best regions of the world, but especially critical in uh, some of the less arable regions of the world. Uh, and that threatens the very basis of agriculture. Uh, given how uh, we rely on herbicides and pesticides to keep yields up, uh, the r continuing rise and acceleration of uh, herbicide-resistant crops and herbicide-resistant uh, weeds and pesticide-resistant insects uh, is uh, a bigger and bigger problem. And by some estimate, uh, farmers last year lost, you know, leaving aside dicamba and things like that, uh, just from herbicide-resistant weeds, farmers lost over a billion dollars uh, to uh, loss of productivity from herbicide resistance. And then ultimately, uh, there's also the issue of fertilizer runoff, which, you know, obviously it's a major threat to uh, aquatic ecosystems and fisheries. But uh, to me, it seems like, you know, the threat from or the loss of billions of dollars of fertilizer uh, is a significant issue we should take into account. Uh, so why are these major th uh, issues happening and how we, can we reverse them? Uh, at EarthSense, we think that uh, one of the biggest trends in agriculture, and this comes up often when we talk to farmers, is the loss of human capital from agriculture. You know, a uh, number of people working in agriculture has been reducing steadily for, you know, many, many decades. Uh, and this is true in the U.S. <laughs> as well as worldwide. Uh, and unfortunately, we are replacing human ingenuity. Uh, the only thing we have to replace it with is sort of the massive equipment uh, as well as the chemistries that we use to keep agriculture going. And you know, th those are our uh, current best options, but the only type of agriculture uh, that's possible with this kind of equipment and chemistries is the massive you know, monocultures that we see all around us. So 200 million acres of just corn and soybean, corn and soybean all around us, right? Uh, and inevitably, uh, that kind of agricultural system leads to uh, the problems that we saw. Uh, and these are just a few of the problems. So uh, we think it's time for another revolution. Uh, and our answer to that is taking biology, taking biology and technology together and bringing technology to the scale of biology. So we've made uh, these ultra-compact, autonomous, teachable robots uh, that we think are going to be a solution in the future of robots working in teams to provide each plant on the field exactly the care that it needs. So uh, that's all well and good. Uh, you know, uh, how does this translate to real world impact? 
to begin with, uh, what we found useful is working with some of the largest seed and agrochemical companies in the world uh, and help them accelerate their uh, R&D process uh, to help them uh, create the next generation of more productive, more sustainable crops, uh, more effective chemistries. Uh, from there, uh, the same technology is applied to agricultural production, uh, helping farmers understand exactly what's going on on their field at any given moment in time on every, let's say, quarter acre, maybe even finer grid, uh, and then allow them to use the uh, very sophisticated technology that they have uh, in the existing equipment. And then long term, we think that the small robots in conjunction with the existing large equipment uh, will make for a much more sustainable, productive, and resilient, uh, as well as more importantly, profitable for farmers agricultural uh, systems. And then we have some you know, secret long-term plans as well, but we can talk about that later. <laughs> uh, so what, you know, we know we're not gonna do this all by ourselves at EarthSense. Uh, so what we're building, in a sense, is a collaborative platform uh, where people can innovate on autonomy, uh, you know, on top of the work that we've done, we've started working with folks to help them coordinate between our robots and other equipment. Uh, on top of the machine vision, machine learning things uh, that we've done and the sensors we've integrated with our robots, uh, we've started working with people to help them create apps uh, for our robots that allow them to specifically create uh, analytics algorithms. And then the same uh, thing will apply uh, for weeding and spraying equipment uh, as well. So we're working with several of the world's leading uh, research scientists as well as equipment people uh, to help them uh, figure out how uh, their technologies can be adapted or new technologies can be created for this completely new form factor uh, of equipment in agriculture. Um, as a sidebar, I just want to say, like, you know, we get this question many times, like, why are we bothering with this, like, phased entry path? And uh, one of the most important things to, that we've found is timing is everything uh, when executing a long-term plan. Uh, essentially, where we, when we started back in 2016, 17, uh, autonomous systems, especially in agriculture, were, you know, a pipe dream, right, uh, to be honest. Uh, and then, you know, where they need to be to be useful to farmers is uh, extremely reliable on massive scales. You know, we know the couple hundred million acres of row crops. That's what we want to serve. Uh, you know, uh, many other folks are dealing with vegetable farms and berry picking and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but we have our eye on the uh, ultimate price. And then the other part, of course, is agriculture is extremely cost sensitive. So the first robots that we made functionally cost a couple million dollars to make, right? Uh, that's not something you can go out and uh, tell a grower, like, hey, this is for you. It's not for them. Uh, but we are on a path where uh, each of these robots will cost uh, less than an iPhone, right? Uh, so a combination of these uh, basically led us to first make some of our prototype robots and start working with the uh, seed companies and so forth uh, to mature the technology as well as to bring the costs down pretty rapidly. Uh, and that's where you know, uh, we started with, so agriculture R&D. So how's that been going? Uh, we knew something interesting was happening when our robots started writing home letters. Well, OK. <laughs> it, wasn't, uh, okay. it wasn't the robots. It was the people who were using the robots. But some of our uh, users of the robots at Cornell University, they were so happy with not having to measure the width of you know, corn stems by hand or not measure height of the plants, but they literally sent us like postcards from summer camp. So that was pretty phenomenal. Uh, KWS, one of the largest seed companies in the world, uh, last year, you know, they've been working with us since 2017. Uh, last year, they did a pretty major post and a video on their website about where they see this technology going. Uh, and then, you know, this happened last couple weeks ago. Uh, so New York Times was interested in what we were working on. And then Corteva, who's been extremely supportive of our vision uh, since, again, you know, when they saw the first robot, which is kind of interesting, they basically saw this 3D printed rickety thing, you know, wobbling around. They were like, yeah, this, is, this could go somewhere. Uh, so we really appreciate their vision and their ongoing support. Uh, so what's next? Uh, 
we've done all of these things with mostly non-dilutive money. Uh, we have uh, an amazing partnership uh, with the University of Illinois. There's lots and lots of uh, you know, uh, very cool and sometimes crazy ideas, most of the times crazy ideas, that we pitch to the National Science Foundation, USDA, and many of them get funded. So thank you for paying your taxes. Uh, and then uh, you know, we've also gotten some of these grants at uh, EarthSense as well. Uh, so that's allowed us to do all of this, but where we're going is the next generation of robots uh, that are going to go through and uh, take care of the herbicide-resistant weeds or spray fungicides in an extremely targeted manner. And then, you know, potentially even more interesting stuff down the line. Uh, and to do that, we're starting, you know, I'm announcing today that we're uh, doing a small fundraise uh, targeted for the middle of this year. And if you're interested, you know, let's talk. So that's our sense, and uh, we're collaborating with everybody to make agriculture better for growers and consumers. Yeah, yeah I'm happy to answer any questions if there are any questions, but I'll be around all day today.